Hey y'all, I'm Paula Dean, and you know today is a very, very special day for me because I'm gonna be cooking with my brother at our new restaurant, Uncle Bubba's Oyster House. And just in case it's gonna take you a while to get here, I thought I'd share some of our signature dishes with y'all. I'm gonna be sharing the secret to the very best char-grilled oysters this side of the Mason-Dixon line, and then I'm gonna show you one of my favorite sandwiches, a shrimp and oyster pull boy that's drizzled with my homemade tartar sauce, and nothing goes better with seafood than something tart. So I thought I'd show you how to make a fabulous key lime pie that's sweet and sour and crunchy, but sure to bring a smile to your face. So y'all pull out your recipe book and grab a pencil, cause I think these recipes will surely make it to your table. that I've ever been this excited about doing a show and sharing a part of my life with y'all. I am in Uncle Bubba's Oyster Bar. My brother Bubba and I are, are not only partners in our lives, but we are now partners in a restaurant. We've got a wonderful deck out here that seats 150 people, and Bubba's gonna have the most fabulous seafood dishes. So y'all stay with me because I'm gonna have Uncle Bubba himself cooking his signature dish that's gonna knock your socks off. Hey, Bubba. Hey, sis. It looks like I'm just in time. Yes, you are. We got us a Ooh, good it's... fire going. I was just chatting with everybody out there in TV land and I was telling them I, I don't think I've ever been more excited about a show than this really? one. Really? Me too. Yes, I'm so proud of you. Well, thank you. You, you meant so much to the Lady and Sons. You took us to all new levels, and the opportunity for us to do this together, open up this seafood restaurant, is mm -hmm. just almost brings me to tears. And I promised everybody that you were gonna show them what's gonna be our signature item here at Uncle Bubba's. Okay. What, what are you doing? This is Uncle Bubba's charbroiled oysters on the half shell, and we're gonna put some butter and Parmesan cheese on it, uh -huh. and we're gonna cook them till it gets a good charbroiled flavor, and they're delicious, and we'll serve them with some French bread, and, and it started. You might wanna get your water bottle, cause I'm gonna start putting the butter to your oysters. All right, now you're having right. to spray that with yeah, water. We, uh huh. we're gonna control the fire. Cause this butter is really uh, agitating your flames, isn't right, it? Right, right. But you want it to do that to this a degree. This is where you get the charbroiled flavor, That's right here. That's right. Those look delicious, Bubba. Yes, they are looking good. All right, now I just sprinkle these with some Parmesan and Romano cheese. And you'll, you don't wanna use the fresh grated. You wanna make sure that you get it already like in the powder form that you use on spaghetti and things like that. And it's gonna give these oysters the most intense flavor. Now you don't think we're gonna have any trouble getting these year round? No, uh-uh. So, so that is a wives' tale you say about months that end in R are only good for oysters. Right, but now that we have re refrigeration mm -hmm. trucks and warehouses and everything, they can be harvested year round and shipped okay, immediately. That one's ready. Okay, Bubba, I'm gonna start shucking some more because those look ready, don't they? But yes, they anyway, do. Bubba and I first had these type of oysters in New Orleans at Drago's, and we just fell in love with them. And we wanted to be able to eat them a little bit more often. So we felt like the guests that come to Uncle Bubba's would enjoy these also. And you have to be very, very careful when you're eating these because that shell gets hot as a firecracker, doesn't it, Bubba? Yes, it will. Have to be very careful when you pick them up. All right, in shucking oysters, you'll wanna make sure that you start with an oyster knife and you wanna keep you a towel around or either some gloves because if you slip with this oyster knife, you, you wanna have a little protection there. So I'm gonna take my knife, I'm gonna nestle it in there and then I'm just gonna twist just like this. 
Bubba, show them how to open my oyster. All right, listen, let me help you. All right, I'd rather butter anyway. Some of them can be a little tough, but you that just got That one was hard, wasn't it? Just got to get it started. And then I like to take and cut the muscle. And you want to make sure when you serve the oysters that you put extra butter on it because we're going to sop up all that butter that we ladled over those oysters, aren't we? Yes. What well, can we taste? Let's do. This is the way I like to eat mine. I like to take my bite of bread and then I like to come over there and just scoop and clean out that shell just like that. You're the man, Bubba. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here you go. I'll fix you up. All right. Not. <laughs> ah. All right. Mmm. Wow. Well, Bubba, they're out of this world. They're pretty good, aren't they? <laughs> no, they're better than pretty. <laughs> it's better than pretty good. Y'all stay tuned, because next I'm going to be showing y'all the shrimp and oyster poor boy that Bubba's going to be serving here at Uncle Bubba's. So don't go anywhere. It's oysters, oysters, and more oysters. I think probably my second favorite cuisine in the whole world is New Orleans cooking. And New Orleans is not New Orleans without a po' boy. And I'm gonna be making today for us a shrimp and oyster po' boy. And there's an interesting story behind this sandwich. Uh, there was a store in New Orleans and every day these bunch of po' boys would come in and pick them up something for lunch. And finally the owner said, you gotta have something here for these poor boys to eat. Well, their, their answer to that was making them shrimp and crawfish poor boy sandwiches. They could pile them high because crawfish were real abundant as well as the shrimp and the oysters. And they said, now this is for those poor boys. So that's why they call it a poor boy. Now I'm getting my shrimp ready right now. But since I'm going to be putting it inside of a sandwich, I don't want anybody to have to deal with a tail. So I'm completely removing the shells. Now I'm going to take our shrimp that we have shelled and I'm going to go right down the center with my knife. And I'm going in pretty good because I want my shrimp to kind of lay open and cover more of my bread. So I'm going to open it about like that. So I, I'm going to make my poor boy, and I'm gonna mix the shrimp and the oysters together. And I wanna put seven shrimp in this poor boy. All right. So now we're gonna move on to our oysters. Well now, they're gonna lose a lot of their size in frying. So you'll wanna go through and pick out the biggest ones that you have. Now I've got some flour sitting here waiting for me. I'm gonna take our house seasoning, which is salt, pepper, and garlic powder. So it'll be a little, little seasoning on our seafood. All right, and in this bowl, I'm gonna beat us up some eggs with Texas peat. And this is how we fry our chicken at the Lady and Sons. And I'm gonna do our seafood the exact same way. Just like I was frying chicken. So I'm gonna really sock the Texas peat to it. And if you wanted your poor boy really, really spicy, then you could add some cayenne pepper to it, but I'm not gonna go that far. So I'm just gonna beat that up a little bit. There we go. And I'm gonna take our shrimp and I'm just gonna roll them around in our eggs and hot sauce and then dunk them into the flour. I would love to know how many uh, poor boys that they served during Mardi Gras. There is no telling. All right, now in goes our oysters. Just gonna toss them around. And I'll have to be careful with these oysters or they'll get lost in the flour. So I think I'm gonna take them right straight on out. But the main thing about your poor boys, 
you don't want to scrimp with your seafood. You want it really uh, nice and piled high. All right, I've got a pot ready for our oysters and our shrimp, and I'm hoping that it's gonna be about 350 degrees or 375, but we're gonna cook these very, very quickly. Just gonna drop them down there one at a time into that hot grease. And as I told you, I'm, I've removed the tail on those. All right, now I'm gonna quickly drop our oysters. All right, let's pull those shrimp out. How is that for a beautiful shrimp? Uncle Bubba is gonna serve so many of these bad boys it won't even be funny. Now, I like my oysters a little on the crispy side, and these look perfect. And you can see what a beautiful batter that that Texas peat and eggs and flour does to them. All right, now I'm using a tartar sauce. Now, some people uh, like an aioli, some people like me. I, I knew they wouldn't be safe. You better get out of here. All right, I'm using a French bread, and I buttered it, and I grilled it, and I'm gonna put plenty of tartar sauce. So I've got my lettuce shredded. I'm just gonna run that on that bottom piece of bread. I'm gonna layer it with my tomatoes. I think I'll put a little salt and pepper and garlic on it. And then I'm gonna start piling my seafood. Does that look wonderful or what? Look at that. You're not gonna believe how good it is. I gotta clean up and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you the key lime pie that we're gonna be serving at Uncle Bubba's. So y'all don't go anywhere, don't leave me. I wanna show y'all the perfect ending to a hearty seafood meal at Uncle Bubba's. You know, no seafood meal is complete unless you have a big piece of key lime pie. Now I love my key lime pies in a graham cracker crust rather than a flour crust. All I'm gonna do is take graham cracker crumbs and melted butter and slivered almonds. And I especially wanna specify the slivers because they're a little chunkier than the sliced almonds. So we're gonna just toss that in. So our crust is really gonna have a lot of crunch to it. Now, if you don't wanna go to this trouble, you can always buy a store-bought graham cracker crust. All right, now I'm just gonna pack this down into the plate. So we're gonna put this in a 350 degree oven and we're gonna bake it for five to 10 minutes. But in the oven it goes. And what an easy crust is that? No kneading or any of that other stuff with a flour crust. All right, and to make the center is just as simple uh, as making the crust. I'm gonna start with two whole eggs. And I'm gonna beat them up just a little bit before I start adding the other ingredients. All right, to my beaten eggs, I'm gonna add one 14 ounce can of condensed milk. This is just so good. All right, now I'm gonna add a half a cup of key lime juice. Now that is very, very important that you use real key lime juice. And as far as the zest goes, I don't have a bit of problem using a regular lime for the zest. And I'm gonna grate just about maybe a teaspoon of lime zest. And you can alter that any way you want to. If you like yours more tart, you can add more zest. All right, I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of our lime zest. And you can see if I measured that out and packed it down, it'd be about a teaspoon. 
Now I'm gonna blend this together. Oh, it smells so good and tart. All right, now I've got a pie crust that's already baked and it's hardened. And I'm just gonna pour our filling into our crust and look how pretty the zest is. Now I'm gonna put our pie into the oven and I'm gonna bake it for about 15 minutes and I'm gonna pull it out, let it rest on the counter until it's cool. And then I'm gonna take the pie and transfer it to the refrigerator and let it chill overnight because I want it to cut very, very nicely. So he will go into the oven and into the refrigerator. Well, I have one finished right here. So to finish off, all I'm gonna do is top him with sweetened whipped cream rather than a meringue. Okay, now I'm gonna do this and have a little extra lime just floating around in that whipped cream. Okay. Oh yeah, that's gonna be pretty. All right, I'm gonna slowly add my sugar to our cream as it's whipping. And I'm gonna ease up the speed as it gets thicker. If I start it off on the highest speed, well that whipping cream, because of its thinness, would have just come all in my face. All right, I smelt my crust. So I'm gonna take that out and let it cool. So all I'm gonna do now is pile this up onto our pie. And there you have it. And all I'm gonna do is just stick a couple of lime wheels in the center. And she's all ready. All right, we're going in, kiddos. Oh, I can't believe it, y'all. I'm gonna have to go get a pie server. This is, this is not working. Sorry, y'all, but I guess I'm gonna have to wait and share this pie with Uncle Bubba. So y'all come back, I'll see you in a few minutes. There's nothing to stop me from licking the spoon, though. I want to share with y'all a few great tips that can make your outdoor seafood party go so smoothly and make it easy on the hostess. You can see that I've started with just an old galvanized tub. I bought this from the hardware store. They're very reasonable and I promise you'll find several, several ways to use this thing. But today I'm going to use it to house all the seafood that I'm serving my guest. Now I've piled it full of ice that I just bought from the curb store and I have coated it in a kosher salt. If you would like though, you can use an ice cream salt which is coarser and either one will work but it will help your ice to keep from falling down into the bottom of the container. And I have put in my oyster knives, my crackers and my forks all around the tub and all you'll want to do is just pile your seafood nice and high. Now I'm gonna pile mine with some of those Savannah blue crabs that we all love here. And now I'm gonna take my boiled shrimp. Now these are already shelled, so the guest won't even have to fool with shells. And I'm just gonna toss it around directly on top of our ice. And I'm gonna finish it off by sticking some nice cold raw oysters around. And to top it off, a few clams. And I think we all agree that this is fit for the nearest and dearest family and friends that you're feeding. Do y'all know something? I'm so proud of my little brother Bubba. I think he's got some wonderful winning dishes here for Uncle Bubba's restaurant. I'm really proud of you, Bubba. Thank you. 
So what are you more excited about serving the folks? The poor boys, the key lime pie, the char-grilled oysters. What are you just so gung-ho about? Uncle Bubba's char-broiled oysters. I figured you was gonna say that. I have to say I love them too. I really do. But you know what? What? Don't that pie look good? You wanna dig in? Last one ends a rotten egg! <laughs> Until next time, y'all, this is Paula Dean and her brother Bubba, and we send you love and best dishes from our seafood restaurant to yours. <laughs>